adamantbeliever.com forward slash election. We're going to go over some of these statements. And right now, I just really want to protect you as members of ABC. I feel like if I'm your shepherd, I'm supposed to protect you. I'm supposed to uh, watch for your souls according to the Bible. And I want to do that. So I want to inform you to keep you informed during this time so you won't get swayed emotionally. You know, you can't believe them when they email you and say that the Lord showed them and told them. God gave them a prophecy. Somebody, you know, this is the time when all of these folks come out the woodworks trying to prophesy. And I want you to make sure that you not believe in everything. The Bible said, believe not every spirit. Try the spirit. How do you try the spirit? Let's take the word. Let's take the word. Okay, this is a stranger inboxing you, giving you a word from the Lord, and you don't know them. You're not in fellowship with them. Is there somebody in your life that you're in fellowship with that God could have spoke that through? Then that's who he would have spoken it through. He's going to speak it through somebody that you trust. Yes. So I don't want you just to believe everything. I want you to be able to rightly divide it and understand what God is doing what God, what role God plays in all of this. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. I mean, today. And I, I, I arranged this in questions, so it would be easier to um, kind of go through it. First question, is God going to use Donald Trump to help his people like King Cyrus did in the Bible when he freed the Jews from exile. This seems to be the popular opinion of most evangelicals as well as, you know, uh, other sensationalists and different ones that believe that God elected Donald Trump or he's going to use Donald Trump um, during this time. And he wasn't going to use Hillary, but he's going to use Donald uh, because he's a Republican um, and versus, you know, I, I just for me, I can never separate the fact that even though Obama was a Democrat and he was for the LGBT, Donald Trump, whether he's for it or against it, he still has to write policy for them. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yeah. So he may be against abortion, but he still has to write policy for it because he, his, his rule encompasses both sides. Right? So, yeah. That right there don't make sense anyway for me to be putting God in, the, in, in it. Because if it's God, then, I mean, it's going to be all God or it's not going to be God. Amen? Now, let's, let's figure out who King Cyrus was before we make Donald Trump anoint him, as, first of all, as a king, and then as Cyrus in the Bible. Isaiah 44 and 28. That saith of Cyrus, Isaiah's prophesying, uh, uh, what God is saying, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built and to the temple, thou foundation shall be laid. So what King Cyrus did, he brought the Jews out of exile and basically made them uh, a nation, independent nation again. He freed them from the bondage that they were in in Babylon and uh, to the uh, being in bondage to the pagans. OK, so God actually used him to free them. Right. Just like he used Nebuchadnezzar to enslave them, okay? Now, this is God using a king, okay? But they're trying to say that God is going to use Donald Trump to help churches get money, to help our schools, to help bring Christian policy back, prayer in the schools, and all these different things in America. God is going to use Donald Trump like he did King Cyrus, okay? So, is he going to do that? No. No. Donald Trump is not a king, and America is not a monarchy. Can I say that again? In order for God to instate policy in America through a man, America would have, or through one man, America would have to be a monarchy. We are a democratic republic, which means what? We are ruled by who? We're ruled by who? The people. We rule America. Our president is not able to do what a king does because in America, the president is a spokesperson for who? He's elected to speak for who? The people. The people elect him. He speaks for the people. Does that make sense? In a democracy, the people would have to be used by God to make changes in a society, not the president. If the people 
elect the official, then the people would have to change in order to change. I'm just going to tell you what he told me and he showed me. This means that if the people voted in a president with a Luciferian agenda, we cannot expect God to intervene and use this elected leader to do something that the democratic citizens or the people themselves do not desire. The president was chosen by the people, therefore the people want his policy, not God's. Yeah, people didn't turn back to God until their candidate lost. Because they want the person's policy. They wanted God's policy. They deal with themselves. 2 Timothy 4 and 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, they're going to heed to themselves teachers. They're going to pick people that's going to say what they want to hear and do what they want done. They're going to turn off sound doctrine. They turned me off temporarily until the candidate didn't win. Now they want to hear some sound doctrine and want a word. I was asked probably 5,000 times in the last few days, I need a word. Do you have a word for me, pastor? I'm your pastor now? Really? Did, Donald, did God put Donald Trump in office as judgment or to help God's agenda? Did God put Donald Trump in office? First Peter 4 and 17, for the time is come that judgment must begin where? In the house of God. Judgment begins in the house of God. Donald Trump's not a part of that. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? So the Bible just told you that judgment begins in the house of God. The preachers, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists, that's who God is dealing with, not Donald Trump. So Donald Trump is not put in office as no judgment. So because Hillary lost, God is going to see, see, now Donald Trump's in office. That's judgment on America. Yeah, they forgot about Hillary Clinton and the emails and her Satanism. Her daughter wears the upside down cross. You know that, right? Oh, Google a picture of her. What's her name? What's the Clinton girl? Google a picture of Chelsea. She wears an upside down cross all the time. They're Satanist. They worship. Who do Satanists worship? Satan. Black folks didn't start calling Bill Clinton a black man until they found out he smoked weed and cheated. <laughs> Our first black, y'all thought Obama was the first black president? No, you didn't read? African Americans start calling Bill Clinton. He started preaching in churches. Got famous in black Pentecostal churches, playing his saxophone and preaching because he smoked weed and cheated. God did not put Donald Trump in office. No. God did not put Donald Trump in office. God is not electing presidents of the United States. We had an election and he was selected by and the elite are the people that selected him and every other president that has ever presided over America. Freemason Illuminati leaders are always handpicked by their own councils. The illusion of the electoral process is used to pacify the general population and make them believe that they are responsible for the elected officials. People consider this conspiracy theory, and it is. It is a conspiracy. When has it not been? When has money not caused a conspiracy? The love of money is the root of... Anytime there's billions involved, there's a conspiracy. They put out slanderous videos against each other, Hillary and Donald. I'm talking personal attacks. And then when it's over, they're friends again. America's fighting and they're friends. That's not a conspiracy. The Republicans used to carry the African-American agenda. And then they flipped it. Now the Democrats. So that's why Charles Barkley, we lost. We lost the election. Our candidate didn't win. We, we, who is we? Black. The black people. We all have the same one. 
Don't you dare go against our candidate. 50 years ago, though, it was Republican. And they're going to flip it again. They're going to switch it again. Because it's a conspiracy. Lord. The illusion of the electoral process is used to pacify the general population and make them believe they're responsible. People consider this conspiracy theory. It is. But the people that rule the world, the world bankers. Now, who's going to rule the world other than the world bankers? The money's. Gangsters, I tell you, you want to find the mess, follow the money. The money. Money make you act the fool at the first of the year when you get your income tax. You ain't saved no more for three days. Family, fighting, feuding, arguing. Oh, yeah, that's what the argument at the funeral, and uh, that's what it's all about. Ain't nobody, don't nobody care who's in that casket. You think they fighting over the dead? They're not fighting over no dead body. The money. But the people that rule the world are real, and money is always the catalyst for their decision-making concerning the president. Always. It's time for some money, Donald we went eight years with the emotions, with the he-motions, letting all the homosexuals and the, and the, the transgenders, and we went to eight years of all of that. It wasn't nothing about money. It was all about gayness, LGBT. Couldn't even talk policy, foreign policy, because all he wanted to talk about is gays. Nigeria invite him down. Uh, Ghana invite him down. As soon as he stand up, yeah, we need some gays down here. Like, dude, you came to talk about the diamond mines. Why are you... The eight years of that now it's money time so they selected the money man did he need political experience does he have money experience <sighs> to suggest that God selected a pagan leader is absurd the only reason God used Cyrus was to free Jews from bondage God also used King Nebuchadnezzar to place them in bondage. The Israelites, listen, will y'all listen to this? Everybody listen, play, pay close attention because God spoke when he told me this. This is crazy right here. Please listen. The Israelites at the time were unique in that they served God as a what? They served God as a whole nation. Because they were a nation, God used a ruler to punish or bless them. You can do that if it's a whole nation. This was the dispensation before Christ came. Now that Christ has come, he is our king and ruler. He is the one that brings blessings and chastisements to us. God is not judging America through a president. Why would he do that? And America is not a chosen nation. People that think God is judging America are speaking as if America is like the Israelites, a nation unto God. It's not. It's never been. Freemasons who are builders that worship Satan built this nation. It's not a Christian nation. This belief is identified as displacement theology, where you go get a Bible passage and try to apply it to what's going on right now, but it doesn't transfer because it's, things are different. Displacement theology is defined as parallel in biblical characters or situations to present day events. America is a nation comprised of all kinds of beliefs and ideas. Every day at work, you're sitting by somebody that believes something else. How can it be a Christian nation? It was just a few, a, a few of them that believed something different than what Moses brought off the mountain and the ground opened up and swallowed them up. That's God's nation. The ultimate goal of the elite that rule America, the Freemasons, is to rebuild the Tower of Babel as depicted on our money and the, all of their insignia. Everything is showing them building the Tower of Babel again because God stopped them. Ultimately, the leaders that are picked in America are not working for God or his people. They are working for the elite that control them so they can build the tower. They need one world again, a one world government, one world currency, one world communication. 
Because the last time it happened, they almost trumped God in their minds. Genesis 11 and 6. And the Lord said, behold, they are one people. They have a one world government. They all have the same language. And this is what they begin to do by building this tower. And now nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible for them. That's why God divided them, confused their languages so they couldn't get together and form a one world government. Because he said, if they do that, I can't stop them. It's impossible to stop them. It's, I mean, it's impossible to stop them from achieving what they want to achieve. And that's when he's going to have to come back and just end everything. Many people that believe that God selects American presidents want to believe that this is all conspiracy theory. Somebody sent me that. Man, you need to quit preaching all this conspiracy about the elite. And it's all conspiracy. No, no, God picked the leader. God picked the leader. God picked. I said, if God picked the leader, that's conspiracy. Because you're telling me that the votes didn't. And they take it to a new level of dumb every time. That's a new level of dumb. Brother, you preach a conspiracy. The elite, you talking about the elite voted in me. You talking about the elite, oh, that's conspiracy. But God did it? When did he do that? How did he do it? How did God elect Donald Trump? So the votes don't count. So if Hillary had won, God would have blew all the votes out of the booth. So Donna would win. That's not a conspiracy. Either they, either they are voted in or there is a conspiracy. Conspiracy. Either the votes counted or they did not. Whether you believe the conspiracy is the elite or that God picked the president, it's all what? The Bible says that God selects rulers and those that are in power. Doesn't he control that? Psalm says, for promotion cometh neither from the east, nor the west, nor the north, or from the south. But God is the judge. He putteth down one, and what? Set it up another. Now this is God, just like he said in Isaiah, I made evil. This is God taking ownership of what happens under his watch. Like, like see, if men were more like God, we wouldn't have these issues in the home. If men would take ownership of their children and their relationships, we wouldn't have these problems. But men don't want to take ownership. They want to blame somebody. If it happened under your watch, bro, it's your fault. Just like God, he's, he's taking it under his watch. I mean, he's taking it. He's, he's like, hey, I'm doing this. Anything that's happening, I'm doing. You mean all the killings and all the sin and all that? He said, I'm doing it all. Don't mean he's participating in it. It means it's happening under his watch because he is creator of all. Oh, I wish somebody would get some common sense. Good gracious. God is not evil. The Bible said there's no evil in him. If what he did was evil, it ain't evil no more because he did it. He can't do evil because whatever he does is just because God did it. God controls everything in the sense that everything happens under his watch. So whatever happens is allowed by God and he is ultimately responsible as the creator of all things. However, man has dominion in the earth to do his own will and make his own choices. God sent Jesus, but we must believe and receive him to be saved. We are responsible for our choices and must give an account for them in the end. Y'all believe that, right? So we chose, we chose Donald. The American presidency is not an office that God needs to work through to benefit the body of Christ. What does God need Donald Trump for? God set the record straight in the New Testament and gave the people the offices that would directly affect their lives. Pastors, prophets, teachers, preachers, evangelists are here for this perfecting of God's people and protection of God's religion. We as the church are the ones that God will speak through and use for his purpose. God is not using a person like Donald Trump to work on his behalf because he doesn't need Donald Trump. Trump can be influenced by the five-fold ministry of the church, but in America, most of the preachers that usually surround the president are political themselves. 
Mark 8 and 15, and he charged them saying, take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of who? Herod. Who was Herod? Herod was the president. He was the king. And he was saying he was a Christian so the Christians would vote for him. And he was saying he was a pagan so the pagans would vote for him. God said, beware, because if a little of that is in you, it leaveneth what? The whole. The minute Donald Trump sits down and writes policy for the LGBT, he's down. He's not God's man. God's man does not do that. What can Donald Trump do for God's people that the leaders of the church can't do? If the government helps churches, they must become 501c3, which gives the government ownership of the church. Do you want the government to help the church? Because then they own you. If the president is going to make schools better, public schools, then the schools must abide by the LGBT agenda as well because the president must be fair to all people in America. The LGBT agenda is in the public school and it's there to stay and it's only going to get stronger. You know why? Because it's public school. Pub, public, public. True believers can pray and seek God for direction concerning our money, jobs, and homeschooling. How many of us? How many of y'all done that? Let me see what God says about my money. I don't need to wait on Donald Trump to tell me nothing. School corrupt. I'm taking the kids home. I'm gonna teach them at home. School's corrupt. Can't be praying and fasting for a public school. That's pu That's like just we welcome a whole bunch of Satanists in here and get mad when they start throwing up the devil sign. We brought them in here. We welcomed them in here. That's why they're not welcome here because we don't do that in here. You can't do that with public school. They can do whatever they want in public school because it's. <laughs> we can solve our own problems in the body of Christ by utilizing God's word and following God's who? God's leaders, not pagan leaders with sinful agendas. Ephesians 4 and 11, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, evangelists. Pastors, teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying, the betterment of who? Yeah, we have our own presidents, our own cabinet, our own elected officials. Doesn't the president have the right to change laws and elect cabinet members and judges, etc.? Our vote is important for those reasons, right? Second Timothy 3 and 1. This know also that in the last days, what's going to happen? Why are we trying to avoid something that the Bible has already said is going to happen? Perilous times are going to come. They are going to come. Well, it's just irresponsible for you to say that and not go out and vote for them. Go vote for stuff. I don't care what you vote for. Guess what's going to come? Our votes do not count. The Electoral College is a farce. Nobody studies it. Nobody studies the Electoral I had somebody tell me they were in a government class just a couple of days ago. And the teacher told them, that was Diana, wasn't it? And the teacher told them, uh, yeah, well, you know, the Electoral College is just a bunch of bull coin. Showed her and everything. She's, and she, you know, she's not from here, so she was just, that messed her mind up. She's like, but Pastor, why is everybody voting and it doesn't matter? I said, well, because they just feel like it matters. But, I mean, it's public knowledge that, it, this, that this whole thing is just fake. That's what she was saying. I said, yeah, it is. But they just want to feel like folks died for the right to vote. Nobody died for no right to vote. Who did? Who died? Who died for that? I show me that person and, and if they did die they didn't die for you to vote for somebody if there's nobody to vote for what you gonna do when two clans members run uh, Africans what you gonna do who you gonna vote for there oh now it's time to pray 
It's time to pray. Let's pray. It's always time to pray when you don't get what you want. But even, in, uh, even if our votes count it, there is an antichrist agenda that is going to prevail. You know why? Because the Bible says, in the last days, there shall be antichrist. Even now, there are antichrist. There are many antichrists. The Bible said that. We can pray that it be delayed, but voting in a certain candidate will not delay it. Whoever's in there is going to do what they tell them to do. This happened since, they, since the first one. We can pray that God's truth would reign in the White House. Oh, Lord, take over the White House. Turn it into the all-encompassing colored house. Lord, just... But ultimately, America is on a path to destruction. The Bible says that it will happen this way. This is why it's important that we take our election energy and fuel our homes with it. Everything we are seeking from these candidates should be invested in our homes. The passion, the emotion, and the hope we have in the election process needs to be toward our marriages, our children, our brothers, and our sisters in the faith. 2 Corinthians 10 and 6. And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience. All these folks protesting, everybody trying to fight, protest, stand up, whatever. they're ready to revenge all disobedience. Uh, all disobedience. But they forget the last part. When your obedience is what? Yeah. Stop protesting for the little boy that got killed by the cops and go deal with your little boy that's on his way to jail. Your bad decisions. Your bad decisions. Men, go talk. Why do, why do daddies always show up after the boys did? He on TV. <laughs> These cops, <laughs> doggone cops. Where you been? Why are people so hurt over this election as opposed to the other ones in the past? Why the violence and protest? Matthew 24 and 10. And then shall many be offended and shall what? Betray one another and shall what? Yeah, that's what he said about the end. Sin and bad decisions are what is fueling the emotions of most protesters. That's what's fueling the emotion of most protesters. Most people that are protesting are fueled by the sin of their past and the bad decisions they've made. Instead of owning up and saying, I made a bad decision, they want to cover up what they've done by blaming it on society. When people make sinful choices in life, they put themselves in position to be discontent with their lives and they seek ways to express their anger. They want to reboot. They want to reboot their whole life and change everything, but the fruit of their bad choices will not allow a fresh start. They're still divorced. They still got four or five baby daddies. They still got a bunch of kids out of wedlock. They still got diseases. They still got all these things you get. They still got a rap sheet. They still in jail. They st all of these things. You can get a fresh start and ain't none of them going away. So they want to reboot. They want to start over. So how do I start over? I find the cause to participate in. Take the attention away from what's going on in my life. And I go deal with what's going on in other people's lives. Man, I just preached in here. So instead of owning their bad choices, they find ways to redirect the blame. Even if they have to go back a hundred years to when Nat Turner was a little boy. They'll find somebody to blame and a cause for their bad decisions. The white man, the man before the white man. It's not out of the Bible, the Christianity. The, the, they'll find something to blame. Someone to blame. Because they don't want to own bad decisions. Instead of moving forward, as God's word teaches us, you move forward by starting to make good decisions. When you start making good decisions, you're moving forward. But instead of moving forward, as God's word teaches us, their emotions keep them reverting back to the past so they can blame someone else. Y'all, this is about to be the best thing I've ever said in here. The saddest part is that when you do not own bad choices, you cannot make better choices. Because that blessed me. Think about that. <laughs> when you do not own bad choices, 
your past. You can't make better choices because making better choices would mean that your past choices were bad. And you have the innate ability to change your choices. So if you make better choices, that means you can make better choices and you shouldn't have made them bad choices. So it takes blame away from everything and puts blame on you. By you making better choices, you just blamed yourself for the bad choices. If you can make good or better choices now, then you could have made good ones in the past, and this makes you own the blame. This is why people that are fueled by emotion cannot overcome them and do better. They can't overcome their emotions. They are trapped in a cover-up of their past. I used to wonder why friends and people, even in my life, they would just drop off like flies. And I'd be like, dude, let's just fix this. Let's fix it. No, they can't fix it. Because if they go to working on it, then they got to own the stuff behind it. And they've already blamed that on somebody else. James 4 and 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it's what? Man, the Bible will preach. No matter how you're looking at me, I'm almost done. Why do I feel so much pain behind this election? It feels personal, like I have been hurt emotionally. Heard this a hundred times this week. Mark 8 and 35, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall what? Most people use politics to escape their own responsibility and place the responsibility on someone else. Consequently, when, these, when things go wrong, they can deflect the blame. Most politicians choose politics because they were not happy with what happened to them. Their motives are usually fueled by failure. When a man feels he has failed or let himself down in some way, he needs an audience to approve of him. So he goes out and campaigns for the approval of others because in his own eyes, he feels he has failed. Bad marriages, bad children, bad decisions, etc., cause men to seek the approval of strangers to vindicate themselves. They are pride-driven in most cases because instead of making changes to help heal their past errors, they cover them up with the applause of people that do not truly know them. Proverbs 29 and 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people what? Mourn. This cycle creates leaders that lead people to do the same thing. People are looking to the president to help them feel better about themselves. Hillary made women feel better about themselves. Yeah, no matter how many mistakes, no matter how whatever they've been through, Hillary made them feel better about themselves as a woman. If feminine men felt better about her. Because they used to women telling them what to do. They used to women ruling them. They used to following a woman. I need a woman. The words of men are too harsh for me. They have made terrible choices in life. And their bad decisions haunt them. They want to feel like there is hope. So they place their hope in the election process. Many Americans overreacted to losing the election. Because they felt like they had lost in life. <laughs> Wasn't even about the election at all. They were feeling like that before Hillary. This is because they are holding on to their life or the hope of having the life they dreamed of. Listen, instead of losing their life and dying to themselves in obedience to Christ. Christianity is about losing your life, losing your identity, losing who you once were is the reason why Christ came. He came to do away with our sinful nature and every bad decision that we have made because of it. Being a new creation means we have a fresh start. Even if you blow the fresh start, Christ can give you another new start. But we must first take ownership of our bad choices and decisions. We must admit that we have done things the wrong way. We must overcome our past and allow Christ to lead our future. Our faith, confidence, and hope must remain in Jesus Christ alone. He that findeth his life shall lose it, but he that will lose his life for my sake shall find it. We must pray for Donald Trump that God truly saves him. That's all you can pray. That's all you can pray. You can't pray for policy to come through him because God gave you leaders to obey. 
Now they ain't in the White House. They're in the church house. We must pray for our nation that God has mercy on us in spite of our behavior. We must pray for our homes that we would model what God desires for every household. And lastly, we must love our fellow man as ourselves so that we can please God. Uh-oh. Go back to that last one, please. This is Bible. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, everything I talked about is in this passage. I started with this passage. Everything I talked about. First he says, if whose people? He said, okay, first, if my nation, not America, my people, God ain't saving America. He's not saving a land. My people, which are called by my name. You know, the ones like Ernie Johnson said, you know Jesus, have you heard of him? Shall humble themselves, meaning stop being proud. Deal with yourself. Own your past. That's humbling yourself. Say, I did it wrong. Now I need to do it right. Turn from their wicked, or seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Stop sinning. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin. And I will what? Heal their land. Everyone stand to your feet.